Relevant Radio now presents the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass from the Chapel of the Nativity at Relevant Radio. Our Executive Director, Father Rocky. It's 12 noon on the Sunday, May 10th, Mother's Day in the United States of America. And I'd like to invite you to join me as we pray the Regina Chaley, and then we'll begin our Sunday Mass. Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia, for he whom you did merit to bear, Alleluia, has risen as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia, for the Lord is truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And our entrance antiphon for this fifth Sunday of Easter is, O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations he has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. Our opening hymn today is number 562 in your hymnal, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore Thee, Casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, Which word and art and evermore shall be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Thanks for joining me today for this Sunday Mass, a special Mass, especially for mothers. This is Mother's Day in the United States of America. And this helps us live the fourth commandment, which is honor your father and mother. And all of us have a mother. It's the most basic human relationship. And it's a great day to show our gratitude to God for our mother by reaching out to her. And if she's not with us here on earth, praying for her, this is a day many people go to the cemeteries to uh, plant flowers on the grave of their uh, parents and their mother. So that's a great thing. So I'm so glad you could join us. And now let us begin. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts, in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit, and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, 
the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it's not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve a table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With a ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me, too. In my Father's house there are many dwellings. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. 
Jesus said to him, if I've been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today in the United States of America is Mother's Day. It's always the second Sunday in May. And in the Chicago area where I live, at least on the weekends or most of the time, if you're doing any yard work, you don't plant annual flowers until after Mother's Day because not till then are you ready to, um, or you're free of the threat of frost. And then June, we have Father's Day. And even though these are not official holidays in the church, the whole sentiment of honoring your mother and honoring your father is a deeply Christian sentiment because God is our father. Mary is the mother of God and she's our mother. And fatherhood and motherhood is a splendid gift that God has given to the human race. So these feast days are truly Christian in nature. So first I wanna wish all of you mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day. I recall the traditions in my family growing up on Mother's Day. We dress up and we'd go to 10.30 a.m. Sunday Mass and afterwards go to brunch at our favorite restaurant. And that was a great thing because it was Mom's Day and we'd make dinner and, and all the rest. <laughs> I don't know how she put up with it because she was a better cook than the rest of us. But anyway, um, sometimes it's good humility to accept the gifts of, that people give to you. I wonder how Jesus would celebrate Mother's Day if he were born in the year 2003 and it was Mother's Day. Well, we do know some things about how he treated his mother, and that is by a prevenient grace she was created without the stain of original sin. That's pretty good. And also through a grace from God, she never committed a sin in her life. That's pretty good. And at the end of her life on earth, she was assumed body and soul into heaven. That's really good. I know some people, they send their parents down to Florida in the winter. That's pretty good. But assuming them body and soul into heaven, that's a lot better. And then the final touch is Jesus crowned Mary as queen of heaven and earth. And she got a crown. Now, I don't know how many of you would like a crown out there today, um, but there's somebody who works here, and she told me, Father, when you go to the Holy Land, could you bring me back a crown? Well, I couldn't find one, and I wasn't going to say you can get a crown for yourself at Burger King. It's just not the same. But I want to follow sort of the example of Jesus and how we honor our mother. Now, the very first thing I want to tell you is I reached out to a couple of my sisters and some of my nieces and I said I've got to give this homily on relevant radio to thousands or tens of thousands of women on Mother's Day and I need help on writing a job description for a mother and uh, they all answered back immediately they were eager to participate my two sisters and several of my nieces and oh by the way all my nieces have married Italians from the East Coast isn't that something I don't know if you've ever been to an Italian wedding, but it's, it's pretty awesome. So here's some of the, the words they put here as a job description or the duties of a mother. Coach, personal trainer, counselor, psychologist, director of purchasing, transportation, budget, finance, maintenance, and facilities. Well, that's quite a job description. That sounds like three people, but it goes on. Interior designer, meal planner, chef, executive chef, dishwasher, vacuumer, gardener, ambassador, entertainer, mind reader, cheerleader, teacher, referee, nurturer, ringmaster, nurse, doctor, first aid, motivational speaker, director of events, director of social services, a sleep deprived superhero, a best friend, the luckiest woman in the world, supreme motivator, full-time lover, and endless encourager along with being 
completely selfless, you could write your job description too. All of you who are mothers know that there aren't enough hours in the day to do all that you want to do for your children and for others. But that phrase, completely selfless, to me, that really summarizes the vocation of a mother. And it should also summarize the vocation of a father. It should also be the description of a priest. And it's certainly the description of Jesus on the cross, completely selfless. And to live in a completely selfless way means to live a life of loving others above ourselves. And that itself is a grace. Some years ago, when we were sort of in a tight spot at Relevant Radio, I decided to pray a super duper 54 day rosary novena. Now, I had never done 54 day rosary novenas before. I didn't have anything against them, I just never did them. I'd pray the rosary every day, and that was it. But somebody told me, well, it's 54 days because you do 27 days asking and then 27 days thanking. So a novena is usually nine days. Three times nine is very Trinitarian. That's 27. Double that, that's 54. And um, I, I realized that we needed, we needed a breakthrough at Relevant Radio, so I committed myself to praying a super-duper version of the 54-day Rosary Novena. A regular version is five decades of the Rosary every day, like the Joyful Mysteries. An extra is like 10 decades a day. That's the Joyful and the Sorrowful. A super version is like three sets of mysteries every day, joyful, sorrowful, and glorious. But a super duper version is all 20 mysteries of the rosary. It's quite a feat to be able to do something like that. You really have to be determined. So it's a joyful, sorrowful, glorious, and luminous. And I knew I couldn't do it myself. So I told about 15, 20 of my friends, I'm going to send you an email every day, and I'm going to write a little reflection on the titles to the Blessed Mother in the Litany of Loretto, and that'll keep me honest, and if I commit to that, you'll know if I missed a day, and you're going to keep me honest, and we'll do this together. All right, so the Litany of Loretto comes after the Rosary, and at that time, there were only 52 uh, titles in it, so I had to make up two at the end, and the two I made up was Our Lady of the Highways, and there's a great story about that, and the other one I made up is called Our Lady of Perfect Love, the mother of perfect love. And there's a little story about that. So in the book, this is the reflection I wrote about the mother of perfect love. And who is the mother of perfect love? She's the one who sits next to her children and protects them, guiding them, interceding for them, answering their questions, teaching them, encouraging them, and leading them safely to their destination. She lives only for her children and lays down her life for them. She has no life of her own. Her time is God's time. And God's time is for all who come to her for aid. One day offline, I might tell you a story about a mother of perfect love I met on a plane. So let me tell you the story. It was December 12th, either 2011 or 2012. It was when we had that big snowstorm in the Midwest and the roof of the football stadium in Minnesota collapsed. I remember because the Vikings were going to play the Bears next day on Monday Night Football. Anyway, I was flying back from Washington, D.C. I'd been out there to do the baptism of one of my great nephews. And because it has been a big snowstorm, all of the air traffic in the Midwest East Coast was delayed. And when I got there, the airport was jam-packed. Anyway, I was very lucky I made my flight. And as I got on the plane, uh, in the seat right next to the last seat, there was a young mom with two children, and overhearing the conversation, they'd been in the airport all day long. And I said, oh my goodness, they're going to be really tired. This is going to be a hard trip. And she was telling them, oh, we made the flight, and Dad's going to be waiting for us back home in Chicago. So I'm kind of overhearing the conversation, as everybody else around us here in the conversation. The mom starts paying attention to her son, Jack. I think he's eight or nine years old, and gets a magazine for him and shows him the things that he can learn about the plane, and she's trying to keep him entertained and interested. Meanwhile, the little girl, I think she was four years old, she was sitting by the window. Her name was Tina, I think, and Mom made sure 
that she got her seatbelt on, and, and off we go. Off we go. And as we take off, everybody in our section airplane, here's this four-year-old girl, Tina, saying, we're flying. It's beautiful. Look at the clouds. You couldn't hold a straight face because she was just speaking out loud everything we were thinking. And throughout the flight, I realized the mother and the two kids sitting behind me, mom was completely attentive to their needs. Well, we got delayed, and we were in a holding pattern over O'Hare Airport, and finally the captain came on the air and said, ladies and gentlemen, take your seats, put your seat belts on, put your um, trays up because we're about to land. It's that time that I realized the little girl had been in a holding pattern too, and she said to her mother out loud, and everybody heard it, Mommy, I've got to go. <laughs> and Mom said, don't think about it. We have to land. And the more the mother insisted that the child not think about her urgency, the more the girl insisted, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And I think everybody around us are thinking, oh, my goodness, this is going to be worse than a plane crash. What are we going to do? And finally, the mother basically stood up and said, stop the plane. My child has to go to the washroom. And somehow that word got from the, the stewardesses up to the captains that they're going to have to go circle around again because this little girl needs to take care of business and mom is not going to have anything to do with it except to take care of her kid. I just wanted to stand up and cheer. I said, what a great mother. What a great mother. When he finally landed, I turned around and said, you're a good woman. Thank you for being a mother. Thank you for your complete dedication to your children. It was, it was something I'll never forget. And I want to pass that on to you as mothers, because I don't think we say thank you enough to mothers in our country. I think we take all of this for granted. I can't think of a more important vocation than being a mother, to raise children, to bring life into the world, to teach them right from wrong, to give them love. And so the fourth commandment is actually the easiest commandment of all, St. Josemaria would say. He greatly loved his parents. I feel tremendously blessed with the parents I had. May they rest in peace. The fourth commandment is honor your father and mother, that your days upon this earth may be long. And so every day we should thank our mothers and frequently reach out to them. Now, I know not everybody's born with the same sanguine attitude or joyful attitude. It seems some people are born into this world with a disposition which is not happy and not grateful. I don't know where that switch is that you can turn it on. But sometimes the, reason, the way we can get grateful is when we realize all the blessings that we have. And if we work on that virtue of gratitude, it's going to help us to be much more joyful. And in turn, we're going to share that gratitude for, uh, with our parents. So what do mothers want on Mother's Day? What do they want? I think they want their children to love each other. They want their children to get along with each other. And they want some of their time. They don't want a whole lot of time, but they want some of their time. I have a prayer card, which I was going to bring here today, but doggone it, I left it in the office. And it's got a picture of the bus mother on the front of it. And the story behind it is we have a supporter of ours up in the Twin Cities who now, um, a little bit later in life, she said to me, you know, Father, I think, I think she said there's seven or eight brothers and sisters in her family. She said, the amazing thing is we're all still practicing the faith. And that's not typical these days. And then it dawned on me is that I had a mother who prayed for me. I had a mother who prayed for me. And so on the back of this prayer card we have at Relevant Radio with a picture of the Blessed Mother on the front, there's this little poem on the back. I can't recite the whole thing. I had a mother who prayed for me. Oh, what a difference it made for me. You know, she pleaded every day to the Lord for me. I had a mother who prayed for me. Some people have royalty in their lineage, lineage and some people have other claims to greatness. My claim to greatness is that I had a mother who prayed for me. So I want to say to you mothers out there, pray for your children every day. Never give up. Like St. Monica prayed every day for her wayward son, Augustine. Because it's the number one job of parents is to get your children into heaven. And there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is merciful. He's very merciful. 
So thank you, mothers, for all your service, for all of your generosity, for all of your goodness. Thank you for your prayers for your children and your grandchildren. Thank you for praying the family rosary with us across America in the evenings. Now, I'm hoping that some of your husbands are here at Mass today as well. And so I'm going to pass on some advice from a great saint in the early church. His name was St. John Chrysostom. This is the advice he gave to husbands. He said, show your wife you appreciate her company a lot and that you prefer to be at home rather than outside because she is there. Show her a preference among all your friends and even above the children she has given you. Love them because of her. Pray all together. Learn the fear of God. Everything else will flow from this like water from a fountain, and your house will be filled with bounty. When mom and dad love each other, when they respect each other, when they cherish each other, when they put each other in first place, the children are happy and secure. I saw it many times in the classroom. Without ever having to ask a question, I could tell if things were okay at home. If they're okay at home, the children will be happy. So now what I want to do is extend a special blessing for Mother's Day. I told you this week that we would do this. And the source for this blessing comes from three places. One is a blessing for mothers uh, at their baptism. Another is blessing for mothers um, for, from uh, the, the wedding uh, ceremony. And a third comes from the Book of Blessings. God the Father, through his Son Jesus Christ, the Virgin Mary's child, has brought joy to all Christian mothers. As they see the hope of eternal life shine on their children, may God bless all mothers today, especially those who've joined us for this Mass. May the grace of love and peace abide in all Christian mothers, and may they always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. Graciously crown with your blessings our mothers, so that by being a good daughter of God, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adorn it with welcoming graciousness. O God, defend our mothers and their children from every evil. Be their companion, be their companion along their path with your life. May God bring our mothers and their children one day to a share in the unending joys of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. <clears throat> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered together here as children of our Father in heaven, let us bring our petitions before him with confidence. For our Holy Father, all bishops and priests, that they will look to Mary as a guide and witness to trust and cooperation with God's will for their lives. Given to the service of his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the end to abortion, and that all who are struggling with an unexpected pregnancy will realize and cherish the life within them, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those mothers who grieve from the loss of a child, and for those who are not able to have a child, that God may bring them comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our children who are away from the church, that they may be moved by God's grace to return to the sacraments and embrace the mercy of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our mothers, living and deceased, and for all of the Mother's Day intentions sent in from our listeners this week, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Joseph, St. Gabriel, St. Nicholas, and Guardian Angel Society members, and for all our listeners and supporters, that Our Lady of Guadalupe will intercede for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Father, in heaven, we believe in your power and we trust in your mercy. We ask you our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. You can send your prayer intentions to us at mass at relevantradio.com. You can also send us a digital picture of your family. We'll keep it, we'll print it out, we'll put it in our folder. We've run out of space here at the chapel now. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Almost pink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, 
We humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect and especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Jose Maria and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, Fernando my Prelate, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassionate, merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you. At their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him, man in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We enter our trust for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, Son.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you listening or watching, now is the time to say a spiritual communion. I wish my Lord to receive you with purity, humility, and devotion. Let your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervor of the saints. I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever, whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. Even though Relevant Radio is a radio network, we've been streaming the Mass live on Facebook ever since you could start doing that. I think we were the first ones to do that five, six years ago. But when we went into quarantine on March 13th, we also added streaming on our website and on our app. And so many of you out there are very clever. You've learned how to project it on your big screen at home. Or watching on our laptop. One of the one of the frequent comments we hear is that people get a lot out of the mass because there's very few distractions. The cameras are right here on the altar. There's there aren't people in your way. And I hope by uh, attending the mass like this, you're growing in your love for the Holy Eucharist, also your knowledge of it. And hopefully you'll get more curious to learn more about the Mass. It's like a gold mine that keeps on giving. But of course, the Mass is something you get out of what you put into it. It's important to bring a sacrifice to the Mass, something that you offer to God. That effort to be cheerful and positive and encouraging with the people around you, that's a very pleasing blessing to God. That effort you make to speak only well about other people, as your Holy Father frequently reminds us to avoid gossip, which is a very, very common defect that uh, human beings have. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we continue to pray this prayer to Our Lady of Good Health. O Lady of Good Health, our merciful Father chose you to be a powerful intercessor in times of trouble and woe. As in past centuries, when you have interceded to end contagious diseases, we implore you now to end the coronavirus. 
which is damaging the health of many and spreading fear in our communities. Teach us not to be afraid, to be courageous and generous in offering assistance to others and to live joyfully in the state of grace. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I'm sure glad you could join us for this Mother's Day Mass. I hope you have a happy Mother's Day. Tonight we'll have the Family Rosary Cross in America at 7 p.m. Central Time. It was a great pledge drive week. Thank you very much for that. It's a real shot in the arm. God bless you for your generosity. Coming up Wednesday is the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. It's also the day when we will have our annual May crowning. And then next Saturday, May 16th at noon, we're going to have a special Requiem Mass, especially for all those who've died during this pandemic and for the families who haven't had a chance to really properly grieve because they couldn't have a decent funeral for their loved ones. I think that's important. We're going to do that. Our closing hymn is Hail Holy Queen. Hail Holy Queen and throned above, O Maria. Hail Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph all ye cherubim, Sing with all she seraphim, heaven and earth resound the hymn. Salve, 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 Regina.